The stocks logging their worst year since the financial crisis of 2008, driven by fears of a trade war, worries about global growth, concerns about rate hikes, and the political chaos of an increasingly dysfunctional, I think it's fair to say, political system. So, guys, when all is said and done, what do you think was the biggest market mover, obviously, to the downside for the year? Uh, you use the word dysfunctional. That's uh, being very generous, my friend, David. Uh, look, I think the, the main words for me is slow down. I believe that uh, the foreign markets topped out in February because months and months in advance they saw a slowdown in Europe, in Japan, in China, and then finally it hit home as we are not immune. And all of a sudden now, all the economic statistics here, uh, all, the norm is a surprise and expectations to the downside. I suspect it's going to last into the first couple of quarters of next year. I, I do see a slowdown coming, Gary, but I think we're far from a recession. The fundamentals still remain very strong. Even Goldman Sachs, who is somewhat pessimistic, is saying growth may slow to 2% from 2.4% uh, GDP growth predictions for next year. But we're going to avoid a recession. So I think we see a slowdown, but I don't think we see a recession. We may see, we may avoid a recession in 2019. I think we can't say that we're going to avoid a recession. I probably would uh, argue that it's probably going to happen more early 2020. Debbie uh, Downer, Red. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the, the facts are the facts. But I, you know, I got to throw the word trade in. I don't know how you have this conversation. No, without mentioning trade. Yeah. Uh, look, I think it was a huge impact on 2018. If the president is successful with the Chinese, that could change a lot of things. What facts? There's no facts for a recession yet. There's, there's, you know, you're not going to add right, facts. was a bad the, word. I'll give you that. After the fact, when they call a recession, and you'll know it by then, believe me, they're always calling it late. I, I think the year actually ended on a really good note. It was getting very scary yeah, that year. But if this is our worst year in 10 years, down less than 10 percent, that's why America is so great. Because in China right now, it's down three times as much for the year. And Ooh. it looks – honestly, you can make the case that investors got sick of so much winning this year. And what I mean by that is tech stocks got so high, so many trillion-dollar companies, so much enthusiasm. It started to raise interest rates too much. Everyone thought we were going to have inflation. Our dollar was too high. It was too much of a good thing, and investors took money off the table. And it came crashing down pretty fast, about 20 percent at one point. And I'll say it was very good that we've turned around off that because when you go through that level, the chances of a recession, the chances of going down 30 or 40 percent yeah. go up very high. It's very hard to go down more than 20 percent in the stock market and not have serious problems. Boy, that's, well, a great, but that's a great point, but it's also funny. You're absolutely right. Investors did get sick of winning. The president uh, said it. We all thought it was a joke. But the last five days, we should mention, as, as bad as the market's been for the whole year, the Dow Jones Industrial, just the last five days, and this is even including that, that horrible six down day of, of Christmas Eve. The Dow Jones Industrial up 3.9% again in five days. S&P 500 up 3.7%. NASDAQ up 4.8% over the last five trade days. Gary, I know what you're going to say. That's, <laughs> that's just, you know, you got to put it in context. Yes, you're right. But I had to mention that. It's been a good five days. Well, but look, uh, 4,268 Dow points to the downside had a bounce from somewhere. You know, I, look, I did not mention recession here, but I do believe we're going to have some recessions around the globe. The other part of the equation, which I am watching very closely, is debt, the debt markets. I am starting to see corporate bonds being uh, rated lower into junk. And, of course, we can sit in there and talk about how much debt globally. There's $250 trillion of, of government debt, not to mention how much corporate debt around the globe. That's the headwind I'm worried about. If anything will take us into recession, it will be that. I don't know what's going to trigger it. I don't know if anything will trigger it. But that's something I will promise but you every big investor is watching right now. But that's the problem with rising interest rates is the service to the servicing costs on those debt payments has to go up. And that's why not just from an individual standpoint, but corporate and even government debt that uh, we have over 20 trillion in, in federal debt here in the U.S. right now. And can we make enough money to service our debt costs if interest rates go up? So debt, the Fed in China still remain in the forefront of every investor's mind next year. Yeah, I don't know that interest rates are going to be as big of a story uh, as we get into the new year as we felt that it was at the end of this year. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the Fed stays kind of static or if they increase it all very, very little. By the way, and speaking of debt, uh, we should mention that that mortgage debt is almost where it was in 2008. Now, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, I, I'm not 
Uh, I'm not a Debbie Downer about what's going to be <laughs> happening in 2019. On the other hand, I agree with Gary. You got to keep an eye on that, right? David, David, that all matters. Debt has to be eventually paid off. And if economic numbers go south, it is tougher to pay it off. And it turns into what we call somewhat of a vicious cycle. And when there's so much leverage in the system, that's what makes it worse. So that's why I have my eyes squarely yeah. on that right now. And I'm just a big believer. Markets just don't go down 20, 25 percent for no ordinary reason. You don't have all these uh, industrials, uh, housing and housing related materials, all at two year lows, not just one year lows. I really do think they're speaking up about something. I'm pretty sure we're going to find out in the next Gary. six months. And I'm keeping my fingers crossed. It's not so bad. You're Gary, you're ruining my New Year's buzz here. You know, this country was built on, it was built on debt. Buzz. We've got hundreds and hundreds of years of debt. It's one of the it's one of the main reasons our economy is so much better than Japan, where they don't where the consumers don't take on that much debt. You want to see consumers borrowing. One of the problems this year was rates what? were going up a little too high for mortgages. Consumers stopped borrowing. It started to so in the housing market. In fact, I'm hoping interest rates, to, to uh, the other guest point, Rick's point, next year aren't a big deal because that was really what got things falling fast this year. The Fed was, was too hawkish, and the longer-term rates were going up because the economy was so hot, and it was causing problems. We don't want rates to be that high right now. It raises the other guest point, interest costs to our government has a lot of debt themselves to borrow. I like the levels now below 3% of the 10-year mortgage rates are now a little lower than they were a few weeks ago. And it could support things. I think the problem is a scared consumer that doesn't want to borrow is as much likely yeah. to cause a problem as a, as a debt bubble blowing up.